Welcome everybody to our Thursday night analysis stream. I'm your host, International Master William Pascal. What's up? All right. It's hard to read your own writing when you're a genius. What's up, Mr. Coffee Acerbate? You know I'm just kidding. Oh, it's the Armada quote again. You used that last last couple streams. You gotta be careful, man. You're getting dementia. Dementia on. Alright. I've got Acerbate, Sumahair, Goiju. Not necessarily in that order. I've got Mule Skinner, Acerbate, Nefidov, Sumahair, Goiju in that order. Hopefully Nils will stop by with a donation to go first. Uh, move 11 with his late submission. What's up guys? It's been a long day. I love Thursdays when they're finally over. Um, it's my pretty much toughest work day. Good to see you Mr. Coffee. How is work? Speaking of work. Chess is work. Good that you're back in the chess scene. Mr. Coffee finally getting back to chess after studies and COVID various issues. All right, we're ready to start here. This is Astro Bates game. No, we should do Mule Skinner first. If he's not here, maybe I will do Astro Bates game first. All right. We can wait. Does Mule Skinner normally show up though? Not necessarily. All right, what do we do? Do we start Mule Skinner's game or do we start with Astrobate? Let's start with Astrobate. We'll let him go first. Astrobate is in the house. He's paying attention. He's in an analytical mood. All right. Did Picasso really say that? Yeah, Mr. Coffee, you're on the list, weren't you? Maybe I just substituted Mule Skinner for you in my mind, because I can't read my handwriting. What about Nefidov? Nefidov's on the list. We said Nefidov. The question is, is it Mule Skinner? Yeah, it is Mule Skinner. Mr. Coffee, you're not on the list? Oh no. Was I on the list? You're not on the list. Which game is it, Mr. Coffee? It's a different study. You're on the list. You send it in the PGN. Okay, I'll go to my messages. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Lesson session. Been a while since Mr. Coffee sent me a message here. Game submission for Thursday, there we go. Yeah, you know the messages, they don't work properly here. I apologize on behalf of, of Leechess. I actually do recall getting this message, but you know, the problem is when I do get messages, it doesn't like turn on my notification that you got a message. That's the problem. If you guys ever seriously, urgently need to contact me, please don't do it via Leech Us. Mr. Coffee is now a PGN expert. If, if you've got to call like emergency services or please don't, don't try to notify them by, by Leech Us. Call me on my cell phone. 
Just don't give it to Bob. Exactly. No, Bob never had my cell phone, thanks to God. He just got the house number, the landline. He looked up my mom's address and got our listed landline. No, just millions of, like, scam artists know my mobile number. Speaking of which, I really have to get rid of my American phone number that I don't use. Okay, this is... Hello? Are you there? Alright, now, there was further confusion. Nefidov and Mule Skinner are separate. I'm going to start with the game by Astrobate. Yeah, you should do mail. You can send it out with your, <laughs> with your, you and Berlusconi can send it out with your, your love letter for Vladimir Putin. All right. No, we're not going to do politics today. This is all analytical chess analysis. My most serious stream. Okay, Astrobe playing black. We're going to flip the board. I have not seen this game. Be more stable than UK. Whatever, man. I mean, all the leaders all over the world are like morons. It's just... By nature, that's the way it is. All right, e4, c5, d4. So we've got d4, c takes d4, queen takes d4. My math teacher's favorite variation in eighth grade. He was the president of our micro chess club, which was really just kind of a sad excuse for a chess club. Like five people would go every week um, in junior high and high school. So we see Astrobate here. Let me, let me turn off this database thing. Master's database. Astrobate accepting and we never get to see Astrobate have to play against the proper Mora Gambit. It's just disappointing. Um, one of my students was playing Knight C3, D6, D4. My, Magnus Carlsen has played this repeatedly for white. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely faced this before. So there is a guy, Shimanov, who has a couple recent games in this. Shimon Shimanov. Simonov. <laughs> yeah, well, at least the math teacher variation takes your opponents out of book. But, um, knight f6, we've talked about this, trying to induce the opponent to play e5. Actually, Astrobate, I think, has, has shared a game in this line before. So e5 is a big mistake. I mean, is c4 a thing? Is it possible that c4 is a thing? We need to think about this. To be honest, I didn't I didn't really clearly consider this. I have E6 now. And I'm gonna try to crash the center with D5. But I mean this move I have not looked at previously. So knight c6. White has two squares, both d3 and, and e3. We've got to take a serious look at this. If c4 is a good move, then this whole variation goes down the drain. I mean, it'll never be, like, terrible for black, but we got to deal with the c4. Are you going to play, you know, 
We're going to go like full Andras Dorian and do... No, we can't play b5. I don't trust b5. So any suggestions from the peanut gallery? Can I get some suggestions from the peanut gallery? How does black deal with the center? Do we just play the normal move, knight c6, queen moves somewhere, and then we try, I like this here. We try to break, but we can't. You know, you can't, you gotta get out of there before you can break out. I'm gonna turn on the engine and see what it thinks of c4. This bothers me a little bit. All right, e6, I didn't consider that immediately, but it threatens to play d5. If knight c6 right away isn't quite as good, but that's one of the lines we looked at. Here, 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 and then knight c3, bishop b4. A3, bishop takes knight. I think Sumihar would like this position. Castles, it looks like a Nimzo. Queen takes c3, castles, threatening e4. And now we're gonna blast you with d5. It's a lot like a it's a lot like a classical Nimzo. Yeah. There's no way to stop d5. I mean, except for maybe that, but then I guess knight e4 is strong anyway. Knight e4, queen c2, queen a5, check, b4, knight takes b4, queen takes e4, knight c2, check, king d1, knight takes a1, position only Ivanchuk would love, and then Astrobate plays bishop d3, threatening mate on h7. Oh, that beer's heavy. I wasn't expecting it to be so heavy. All right. No, this is cool. This is cool. A lot of analysis in a very rare position, but definitely, you know, Nimzo flavor there. Yeah, thanks. I saw that mate threat. It's interesting the computer thinks this is more accurate to do e6 first. So let's just say white just did a neutral move. Would we bust the center with d5? Bishop e4 check, huh. This is so simple. Knight c6, queen e3. So the game is quite complicated. There's a lot of like unique territory here. You know, so as to be keep in mind, like they can play they can play this. If here, here, and if we try this, can we can we get a crazy crazy move in? Night before for kicks and giggles. Unsound, you say? One man's unsound is another man's creative inspiration. Queen d2, leaving e4 unprotected. Wow. This is fantastically interesting, but it's not not quite stable for black. Okay, let's see what happened. So bishop d3, this is clearly a mistake. Now black just is a free, free for all. You're getting in d5. Yeah, Astrobate, you're too robotic. My name is Astrobate. I play g6 in the Sicilian every single game, no matter what my opponent does I'm going to play g6 automatically so you get the point you're, you're being like robotic a robotic fetishist he's made a bad move this is kind of lame he's got the the octo doc oc here octo bishop <laughs> with the octo bishop He's not threatening anything. 
so you, now you can hit him with this. And I guess he goes there, and then you bust the center with, with d5. With the octo bishop on d3, now he takes. We can take with the queen, but then knight f3. We're just equal. Yeah, maybe this isn't the best. We could play uh, different move orders, though. We could play d5 right away. It's so, so difficult to guess. Why, why is this good? Acerbates moves up there. The d5 isn't as good as we thought in this position. g6 isn't bad. No, I mean, it's all right, it's all right. Now, I just want to make a point, you know. I think the g6 is okay, but I just want to make a point. He's trapping him with e5, and he didn't fall for it. I just want to teach you to think, you know, maybe g6 is a good move. Think for yourself, be creative. Be willing to play other structures. I would give him maximum opportunities to blunder with e5. Bishop g5 looks a little shaky. Now please tell me you didn't move your e-pawn in this position. Because I'm going to stop the game right now if you played like e5 here. Alright, I was worried. I love this move by Acerbate. This is just perverted. He did h6. Like this would be too blatant. If he did e5, everybody would know he's like trying to play bishop b4. So he's thinking like, oh, by doing h6, I'll get my opponent to double my pawns. And then he won't notice the incidental threat of bishop b4. Was that, was that like what you were thinking, basically? Because if you, if you did, you know, this is not a poker game. I mean, it's a chess game. I like the psychology, but I mean, you know, he really should see that. Basically, white plays a3 and your pony... It's not, it's not bad, though. You've got bishop g7. It's going to be hard for him to constrain f5. And that's a monster, anyway. Actually, I mean, what he did is all right. I'm actually, you know, not surprised at all that white took. But white gives up his good bishop. White never should have played bishop g5 in the first place. But now he's got to really rethink his whole, like, life story. White has to try to... No, you're not pathetic, Asterby. We're just making points, you know? I think you're not pathetic. I think it is a creative idea. Knight of three, and then bam. You're not pathetic. Yeah, it's hope chess. It's calculated hope chess. But objectively, if white plays a3, or some other reasonable move... What do you do now? I have a really crazy suggestion. If you want to continue, you can play a5. Just throwing it out there. Right? Because if you play knight f3, you have bishop b4, a b4, pawn, pawn b4. And then you pick off his rook at a1. If you're going to play for cheapos, you might as well be consistent, right? I mean, maybe white's best move is something like, the computer will be like queen d2. I like getting the knight to c3, so maybe here, with the idea of freeing this up. All right, anyway, game over. Bam. Wouldn't want to be a... Nice. Locale, dark square. Very efficient. Thinking about the long term. Mm -mm. Wow. Giving material back. Second exchange back. I mean, he's eating a lot of material now. He's got 
Now he's got a rook. Now he's got a rook and the pawn. A rook and pawn. Rook and pawn and knight for queen and bishop. I like this file. Ooh, that didn't help. Hoppa. Oh no. You have, you have queen takes e3 check. But e4 is good too. That was a good game. Rook d1 not best. Rook d2 is slightly superior. You just checked for the sake of checking, but it's cool. Nice. And mate. So he has to play. Actually, is it mate? Is it forced mate? I said he just checked for the sake of checking, but maybe it is a forced mate. Takes, takes, king g3. It is a forced mate. No, he's got the mate. Check. It's mate. Yeah, wow. So actually your move is better than... The check is not a joke. This is a forced mate. With a pawn on e4. SB, good job. Alright. I, I take credit though for teaching him to play for teaching him to play cd4, queen d4, and knight f6. I also recommend this against the... I also recommend this against the um, center attack. It just confuses people. And it's equally good to play either knight out. Okay, the proper list is mule skinner first. Welcome everybody to the stream. Gather round. Gather around the fire fireside here. I'd like to ask everyone to, you know, tithe maybe like 10% of their worldly belongings to the stream. Personally, it's web chess or Z web chess. Personally, I think probably like the classical Nimzo is the best for white queen c2 and a3 the same situation is probably the worst but it's a matter of taste i guess i'm pawn structure nazi it's also about yeah many factors pawn structure time i don't like the the same variation for white all right but on to game analysis here mule skinner It's that game two. It's game two. The N F three game. Quick off topic chess question. You guys can throw in the chess questions. That's what we're here for. Even if they're off topic. Alright, so this is Mule Skinner with black pieces. A long time opponent and you know viewer subscriber here on the stream I have more than 200 games against Mule Skinner he's one of our most populous online stream players Mule Skinner although hasn't been playing on stream much lately uh, this is a, a live game over the board against White Alo 1937 it was a great year No, F3 is definitely a more constructive move for white. You're fighting for control of the center. You're building your position. A3 just wastes time. But A3 is a bit more forcing. All right. So Mule Skinner's black here against knight F3. Um, I'm trying to remember what his repertoire is. Tarash? So we see e3. Yeah, I mean, reverse reverse Queen's Indian. I think this move is, is okay for white. It's, it's kind of like getting people out of book. It gives them something to think about. Not a lot of people with black, like, prepare for this. They're not really sure what they're going to do if someone plays knight f3 and e3. 
Some people play bishop g4, they might play c5. It's interesting because Mule Skinner is an e4 player, but he's playing d4 with black. And I feel, I always feel like that's kind of weird, you know? You're gonna play e4 with white, but d4 with black. But anyway, I mean, it is what it is. We're, we're like, we're playing white, you know, down a tempo. We're playing the Queen's Gambit. Astro B, thank you for gifting a tier one sub. Our first gift sub tonight. I wouldn't recommend this setup for black to players who don't play D4. Unless, like, you know, you specifically, maybe specifically Mule Skinner plays the Tyrosh, Queen's Gambit. Okay. Now, <clears throat> even if I did play the, the Tyrosh, Queen's Gambit, I guess E6 would be, like, a mainline transposition. Knight F6 is okay. White plays C3. So now we see it's, like, a, a slow kind of Kali system, or Kole. Again, you're you've got to understand you're white in a you know pawn triangle semi Slav. So black has different options here. Um, bishop g four, knight c six, queen c seven, g six. But I think you got to you got to know what you're doing. You know, e six, and now white plays into. What is a classical Kali system with bishop d3? Mr. Coffee, our resident expert. No, don't push the c-pawn here. You don't do that, no. Eh. You don't play this position, so you don't push the c-pawn here. It's cool, man. You're not going to play this position, Astrobate. You're not a d4 player, and I don't want to see you playing this, and this is not a good move. Zucker Tort, like to do that, but it's not necessarily a good idea, as much as I respect Zucker Tort. Unless you have very strong provocation to make that move. Bishop d3, you know, let's see. There's only 582 master games here, and black played c4 in one of them. You draw your own conclusions, bro. Um... White has to do something to to make to make C four a good move. If White plays A three, we'll talk about it. It's not the Karo Khan. So now Mule Skinner. I mean, there are many different setups. It's sophisticated opening. It's a semi Slav colors reversed. Personally, I wonder if White is better off with Knight D two or Bishop D three. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if it really matters. some reason like knight d2 has a better score than bishop d3 maybe there's some variations where your bishop goes to b5 i i don't know usually probably not now i don't know what the best move is i don't know much about anything knight c6 is classical but not automatic I mean, it's it's looking weird to play b6 this early, but it, it is played. I mean, when I look at this position, I see knight c6, bishop d6, b6. You don't want to push and you don't want to take. They're both bad moves. Now we're close to a Marin reversed, knight on bd2. If you play knight c6, it's like literally you're down the tempo in the Marin with white. I think there's flexibility in this knight not yet being committed to c6. There are situations where black will play like a6, b5, and put the bishop on the long diagonal. No, b6 is an idea. Yeah, exactly. I've seen it play with white. White will... Well, white is black and black is white here. We castle, you play b b6, and then you, yeah, you try to trade off the bad bishop on a6. 
That's um, Richard Palliser, 1D4. He wrote a book 20 years ago or 15 years ago where his repertoire with White, I remember specifically, in the semi, in the semi slot was something like doing early bishop d3 and and b3 and bishop a3 or bishop a6 like here. Yes, it's possible. Okay, mainline, Kali or Kohli system, castle, castle, and now knight c6 is by far the number one move. Um, again, b6 is an option. Other than that, I don't I don't see you know knight d seven. It's a move, nothing special. Um, this is definitely surprising to me that if we look at the list of games, there's no one who played Mule Skinner's move here. I guess the problem is that White is going to break with B. I'm sorry, E four. Your other B. So if we play B six, White has E four. We take, he takes with the knight, he's he's working our pieces. So the problem with b6, if we do b6, he plays e4. If we take, he takes, if we take, he takes, and we lose a rook. I played poker badly. I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to cut <laughs> I'm trying to cut down. Um Alright. So e4 is an issue. That's why b6 is bad. It looks like it's just a it's just a bad move. Wow. This would be totally playable if your bishop was on e7. So let's go back. Let's go back. Put your bishop on e7. White plays nine and bd2. We castle. White castles. Now I predict b6, number one move. See? If your bishop's not on d6, you can play b6 here. The point is that after e4. We can take, first of all, and, and when knight takes e4 now, our bishop's not attacked. So you could play something along these lines. Or, like the opening explorer is recommending, black can play like a French. And Mule Skinner plays the French, so it makes sense if he plays it like a French. Yeah, no, I mean, like, personally... Personally, I mean, it feels like knight c6 is black's best move. Knight on bd2, bishop d6, castles. This is the main line. Castle, castle. Main line, Coley system, reversed, symmetrical, whatever. Both sides are, are usually gearing up for e45. But so Mule Skinner's mistake is, is trying to play for b6. With facing this e4 break, his bishop's going to get forked. So he has to lose a tempo. This looks bad. He's a full tempo down now. White doesn't have to play e5, but it might be a good move. I think e5 and queen e2. He plays e5. Now, I really am not sure. Neil Skinner plays knight e8 now, but, but this is a passive square that interferes with our development. Why would you prefer to go to e8? You're not going to do like a knight fianchetto to hold up the king side. This is much more natural, right? Peter Enders. That reminds, that reminds me of one of my gym coaches with name Mr. Enders. But Enders would be, become a German grandmaster. I was thinking queen e2 to prevent bishop a6, and then we play like a la Korchnoi. a5, idea, you know, bishop a6 anyway. White plays a4, fixes the b5 square, we trade our bishop off, and you've got a grandmaster game with the black pieces. Bangladeshi grandmaster, Rahman. Looks scary, but I guess for a French player it's like a walk in the park. Walk in the park. Um, I don't know. I agree that it's it's a little scary. We're a tempo down, and we're black already, so 
I'm not super in love with this. This is a nice idea. Wow, a bunch of games by transposition. Damn. We transpose to a bunch of games. Man, this must be a French transposition or something. That's weird. This is a classical time control game, though. But 98 is a mistake. There's no doubt. Mule Skinner is making mistakes, and, and they're fundamental mistakes. Rookie 1. Now, this is a problem, because bishop a6 can be answered by, you know, the bishop retreating or something. We can av avoid the exchange of, of good bishop here. Not to say that black shouldn't do it. It's just that, you know, that's a serious option. Yeah, this is not a good game by Muleskinner. He's not playing like himself. Now a5. Almost as if he's trying to play bishop a6, even though he could have played it last move. I guess black's just randomly grabbing space, but this, this looks weak. I mean, white... I don't know. Queen e2, kind of a weird move. Cd4... And then the horrifying knight takes d4. I guess it's not so bad, but I mean, in general, you don't want to trade pieces when you have more space. I don't think this makes white's position necessarily better. I guess he wanted to mobilize his f pawn. I mean, it's probably okay. But I mean, better question is okay, why not this? We have knight here, bishop b1, bishop a6, queen. Somewhere. I'm a little concerned about knight c2. I guess we go here. Rook c8. I didn't just do that. I'm so sorry. I have to adjust the board. See, that's why you should keep your board size locked. Why is it so much down? Looks like my my screen capture. I mean, we would play rook c8. a3, knight c6, and black gets kicked out. There's still some hope of a4, knight a5, etc. But this knight on e8, man, I mean, it's a disaster. Alright. But knight c4, I feel like, helps black a little. G spites, welcome. Gotta get this knight off of freaking c7. I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I mean, knight c7 off of e8. Threatening bishop a6. Can't we do that at least? Are we gonna get annihilated immediately? This is ugly. Alright, but I, I, I get it. It's like we're pressing the panic button. No, no, no! We're pressing the panic button. This is why you don't put your knight on e8, because black now does this. Creating, you know, the situation. Neil Skinner knows very well about playing with the backward pawn. Bad bishop blocked in. White could lead to tension, but he takes en passant. Now bishop takes. I expected knight takes, just because the knight sucks, but and it also protects h7, which is no small matter. 
but white has a big advantage here. We have no pressure on this pawn. So I get it. I mean, he played bishop f6 to attack d4. White has a, a, a big advantage here. I'm sure about it. <coughs> I guess he's going to have to play bishop e3. Sad, but true. Still white's clearly better. Knight d6, yes. Finally, the knight's in the game. Now white plays knight g3. And then b5. Alright. So an interesting idea. Black sacrifices a pawn. I need to see... Thanks for the beers. Oh man, beer cheers or cheers? Wish I had some beers. The head of the German like spy department that got got fired is probably sending beers to Putin right now. Joe Joe challenging me, no time for that, sorry. Um Berlusconi spends, sends wine. Putin sends vodka. I figure German spy chiefs send beer. I've gotta find someone that sends beer. Bishop takes B five. I always try to stay up on like on the you know, the news. Am I to understand there isn't beers? Am I to understand like why white doesn't take this pawn? He's just, he's an anti-materialist. Oh my God. It's a free pawn. I don't want to give up my bishop for it. It's a concession. It's a concession, but I still have to argue maybe we should seriously consider. Free pawn is free pawn. It's like poker, a pair is a pair. Poker, pair is pair, and pawn is pawn in chess. At the end of the day, it is what it is. It's something, you know. We got to consider taking this, because, like, what else do we have here? You're just going to let him play b5? I'm just saying consider it. You know, white is up a pawn, and I'm not sure black has full compensation. Black has some compensation. And I don't blame Yul Skinner for sacking that pawn. I think it's actually a reasonable pawn sack. It's not a bad pawn sack, but it's really, a pair isn't just, isn't a pair when it's counterfeited. That's, dude, a weakness isn't a weakness. A tree doesn't fall on the forest if it doesn't make a sound. All right, white, I, I don't know. I don't know if you should take it or not. B5 doesn't do much on that. On the, where's his attack, though? I guess knight h5. Okay, I, I, I promote knight h5. I say here, then. If we're not going to take the pawn, we play knight h5. We go for the dark squared bishop. On the other hand, like, b5 doesn't really do anything. Maybe let's black play, like, knight c4, which isn't that great anyway. So I think knight, knight h5 is interesting. Um... You could play queen h5 and force black to play g6. But I, I think you're not going to be able to sack a piece here. You're going to have to go back um, and retreat. Maybe you induce some weaknesses, but maybe you just like took away h5. The computer says knight h5. Interesting. Rook a d1. I've got to be honest, like, c1 should be considered, because that's an open file. This is a defensive move. He wants to overprotect his d4, although, like, very sensible here. Bishop b1. Okay. That's reasonable. g6 is reasonable. I will give, give Mulesken a credit. He turned, he turned the Kali system into the French defense, which is pretty cool. It's not that easy to do, but he did it. I would have guessed this was a Tarash French. 
Um, now, this guy's you know, not a bad player. Bishop f4, attacking the knight, um, focusing in on, on e5. My instinct is that white is better, but not so easy. Yeah, this looks like a good move. I would think we should move our knight. You know, how bad is knight f5? Like, seriously. I mean, I, I really... Yeah, we're worse. Knight f5. Either way, we're worse. This is really bad. This pawn looks really bad. So I, I admit I don't love that either. There's always rook a6. That's not awkward or anything. And then there's, of course, knight here. Which runs into b3 when we don't know exactly what we're doing with our knight. This is an awful square. Yeah, I mean, white is better, man. I mean, he's played a good game. This is tough, dude. This is a very awkward move for black. Every move is awkward, though. I have a suggestion. You know, this looks weird, but maybe knight f7? I mean, it does fight for the e5 square a little bit. I think we might, you know, we might get annihilated by h4, h5 or something, but we're blocking our rook. Look, there is no good move for black. He plays queen e7, bishop e5. Damn, this guy is brutal for a 1900. I just want to say he knows what he's doing. Neil Skinner plays b4, getting his pawns on the correct color. And now bishop d3. This guy knows his is a bitch with white. Rook a c8. And then, okay, this was an interesting question earlier. He plays rook c1. And now bishop g5. So rook c8, rook c8, and f4. I would I would think f4. But he didn't want to commit, maybe. If f4, bishop h4, I don't know. It's not great. f4 is definitely playable. It's not like a pawn is going to trap your bishop on e5. But he plays this interesting move. Wow, I mean, there's serious possibilities of bishop takes g6 now. What about trading rooks with rook c1? Anybody? I, I definitely, I like trading rooks, but I think we're, we're running into bishop takes g6, which could be very dangerous. Check, takes, king f8. <clears throat> this is where I would be a little concerned about my safety. Knight h5, threatening bishop g7 check. Black is literally hanging on by a thread but a good thread. Dude, this is crazy. Wow. I mean, wow. Can we defend here without dropping a piece? I mean, I'm not liking the feel of 98 here. This doesn't look healthy. Black's hanging on. Wow. Yeah, he's like literally hanging on by a thread. That's so scary. So he doesn't do that. He plays bishop f6. Bishop g6, pawn g6, queen g6, check. We have bishop g7, knight h5. There's an in-between move, but I don't think it's good enough. 
One of my students asked me today, I, I just said in between move, like too routinely and didn't know what I was talking about. In between moves, like the opponent makes a move, you know, in between the moves that you expected to be played, uh, it's inserted in the middle. So you expect black to take here, but instead he plays the in between move, bishop takes e5, intermezzo in Italian, intermezzo. But I'm wondering about this straight up. Takes, queen takes check, bishop g7, knight here with another nightmare. Very scary for black. Maybe he's hanging on. Bishop e8. Queen takes g7 check, we win a piece back. There's too many problems, bishop takes d6. That might actually be okay for black, ironically. Um, Damn. So it's super scary. What's the deal here? Yeah, black's lost. Whew, it, it's almost lost. There's a defense. H takes g6. Queen takes g6. Check. Queen g7. Which sacks the pawn. You do have the c-file. Yeah, it looks like black's hanging on there. Wow. Alright. So it doesn't work. That was scary, but he did have knight h5. That's not an easy move to find. So it looks like Muleskinner's last was actually a major mistake. Can he play knight f7? Speaking of knight f7, wouldn't this work? Dude, get that bishop out of my face. This thing is ridiculously strong, right? If you trade it off, you're okay. What's wrong with knight f7? I think we're okay here after knight f7. No? His... I mean, we're even like threatening h5 in some positions, possibly. Defending the bishop on g5, over protecting it. Play like f4. Knight takes e5. Rook takes e5. Pawn takes e5. Well, it's like playing for f5. It's not clear, man. I think knight f7 is okay. Yeah, man. Knight of seven is the bomb. Neil Skinner. This was a below average performance for you. You gotta play better. Miss knight h5. I mean, anybody could miss that. But knight of seven was a good move. Here, h5. Can we trade pieces, please? I don't like the look of knight h6. Maybe it was, it's just a really bad square. I was surprised here though. I thought white had a different move, queen f4. But I guess, I guess you just repeat position there with bishop g5, or you just go to g5, okay. Yeah, it's a complicated game. He always submits like French defenses. I love analyzing like 100 move French defenses on the stream here. White is a really good player positionally for 1937 FIDE. What's that mean? Well, what does it mean? Anybody? If our opponent is, is 1937 and he's very strong positionally, what does that tell us about the opponent? Anybody? It means that he's weak tactically. He's got to be. Otherwise, he would be he would be like 2200. If this guy's kicking my ass across the board strategically and his rating is 1937, unless he's like 6 years old, he missed knight h5 already. 
We gotta take it to him with some kind of tactical mistake. He's played like a computer so far very well, except for missing knight h5. Mule Skinner is under immense pressure and then plays knight g4. He's like very anti knight f7. But there's a problem now, this. Queen d5 is threatened. So, I mean, white has that in this position. Maybe Mule Skinner calculated queen d5. <clears throat> we don't have a back rank, or do we? You have a tactic with rook c1. Like, this almost works. <coughs> oh, you have queen h4 as well. It's a lot of really tricky stuff. And g4 was a very tricky move. It's, it's steal a base, steal a taco. Taco Bell. Major League Baseball. Dude, where is everybody? 10 viewers? Are you serious? No one wants to watch the art of analysis, like serious chess, on Taco Thursday? Haha, <laughs> the Yankees lost. Congratulations to Justin Verlander. Just rack one up for the old people. Yeah, man. We're always rooting for Houston against the Yankees. Anyway, um, I saw this girl with a Yankees hat. Like, most Europeans have Yankees hats. They don't know what it even is. I just was thinking, like, aha, Houston Astros. <laughs> All right. Anyway, bishop takes e5, queen takes e5, tricky, knight g4. Maybe white should play queen f4 here. Yes? Yes. Uh, how do you defend against that? Oh, you've got queen h4 again. Just to get a stupid question, you get a stupid answer. You ask a stupid question, even. Man, this is like the only move that defends against queen, queen f4. Oof. Yeah, knight g4 is a lot more dangerous than I thought. But he does have knight f1. It's also not mate, you know. I mean, even if black plays like queen h4, queen h2 check, he's gotten a threat there. Yet. Man. I have a good long think here. It looks like there might be a tactic for black. He's got the back rank F1 square covered by three different pieces. There's like no way he's ever getting back rank mated. Plus it gives him a flight square in case of queen h2. F2 is really weak. H2 is weak. Aren't we just... We gotta have something here. The first thing I would look at would be like queen F6. Attacking the queen and attacking F2. White has queen f3. I mean, even this endgame looks okay for black, because his pawn structure gets destroyed. Like, take, take knight f6. We're losing a second pawn. That could be problems. It's most likely a very serious deal. This is, this is... Still, I'm not 100% sure black is lost. But we're so close to a tactic here, Mule Skinner. He got in knight g4, he took the pawn on d5. Knight f2, no. Rook f8, no. Rook c1. Rook c1 allows queen e4. I didn't even like mention queen, queen a8 check. Also an issue. We have to come back. So. How about other tactics? Knight takes f2. <sighs> Doesn't work. Nothing works. It's really annoying.
Knight F2 doesn't even really threaten much, but it does threaten his bishop. Let's see what the engine says. Wow. <laughs> the only good move for black is pawn takes queen, trading the queens. Feels like last resort. But after rook takes queen, we force one of his pieces to the back rank, probably the knight. Although not necessarily. Probably the knight. And that's, I guess, a fair amount of compensation for the fact that we're down a pawn. You know, you might be able to get away with something like this. Takes, takes. I don't really like it, but it's not 100% clear. But I can understand Mule Skinner wanting to play something else. So he plays queen f7, while he plays queen f3. And now he doesn't go into that ending because he's losing a second pawn. Yeah, I mean, you just have to use all your time here. <coughs> I couldn't find a good move. This is like a worse version. Now we have two weaknesses. We're down a pawn. And wait, it's just the one weakness at d4. I mean, white couldn't exchange queens here. <coughs> I think there'd be pretty good chances to hold a draw. Still not easy though. Now your king position is so much worse that you're trading queens. He's avoiding trading queens. But this is far from over. Just that there's no counterplay. Maybe the h file. His king is completely safe. White well, played a very good game. I wouldn't play a4 though. What's wrong with rook? <coughs> rook c2. There might be something with d5. Because after takes you have check. Queen f7. Bishop takes d5. Winning a piece. <coughs> Yeah, it's lost. This guy was awfully good. Wow. Yeah, impressive game by your opponent. But I think you had chances. Okay, guys, back to the study. Back to where we started. Alright, profile. Don't forget, please donate, support the stream. Thanks for the new follower, McDuffle. McDuffle bag. Do we have um we have our game submissions here, studies? Studies. So we're analyzing games for the subscribers to the stream. Please subscribe and and support the stream, guys. Make a donation. You can always donate. Where'd my, I close my window? No, there it is. All right. Thursday night subscriber stream. Who's up next? Sumer. We've got Nefidov, don't forget. Is Nefidov in the house? Hola, Chescudo. Thanks for being a subscriber. Is there still space? Yes. Please send me game. Let's do Sumahair next. Then we'll do Nefidov the next game. Sumahair is in the house, or was. If he hasn't fallen under the table drunk yet. Sumahair, D4. Oh, this is from our Tuesday tournament. 
We have a tournament every Tuesday, Rapid Chess. This week was seven rounds, seven plus seven. Sumer White against Bone Atrophy. Queen's Gambit declined. Oh my. Oh my god. Sumer played Bishop G5 and Black played H6. It, it it could be like a bullet chess sacrifice. This just isn't a move. Wow, Polovodian played it back in 1972. Samuel Schweber played it in 1970. Sorry, Schweber played it in 72. Alexander Goldman played it. Wow, so it, it's a thing. Unbelievable. I don't get it. Like, what's the idea? G takes F6. There's no way that's the move. Polovodian did this and beat Volkov. Wow. C takes D5, E takes D5. Very interesting. I mentioned Polovodian the other day because I played the Belgrade Gambit and this guy is like one of the only like, po what do you call it, Belgrade Gambit experts in the world. I lost to him in a ready opening 30 years ago. But, um, well, I didn't think this is like literally playable for black with the really broken structure. You definitely don't want to have black here against Magnus Carlsen. Um, but, you know, more interesting for me is the people who played Queen Takes F6. The fact that Samuel Schweber played it, like he's, or he was a respectable, like Argentine I am. I don't know what to speculate. I mean, it's possible that, is it possible that like the game was misrecorded? That it was, it was a different order of moves or something? C takes D, E takes D, I takes D5. Oh, I think there's a gambit here. Some crazy shit with like C5. Let's check the Lee Chess database. This has been played. I think I'm confusing positions. Totally dubious gambit. I feel like I've seen this somewhere, but there's no games in the master database. Man, this could be dangerous. Definitely in bullet or like very fast chess. Black's already better if you take an e6. Where have I seen this before? You have to take on c6. Knight takes c6. I guess I've just seen it in similar positions. Nothing exactly the same. It's really only valid in a bullet type of scenario. The main point is e takes d5, knight takes d5. What's black supposed to do? Queen d6. There's a game, like, that's definitely a little hard to believe. Where do those guys get the ratings? Correspondence, maybe? Yeah, I mean, this just isn't a real opening. So Sumihar playing too quickly, you know, a speculative bullet opening for black. Yeah, I mean, surprisingly, the suggested D takes C4 is actually quite a rare line for black, but it's playable. Yeah, that's funny that the very few people play this for some reason. I like how, yeah, there's lots of draws. Jan Gustafsson, who's an expert, um, 
in a sort of Manhattan variation type of stuff. Yeah, desperation is, is a little bit funky. I guess all the more reason that we shouldn't play bishop g5 against the queen's gambit anymore, huh? Alright, Chess Kudo sent me a game. We'll try to get to that. Since you are a faithful subscriber to the stream. Alright, analysis board. We're going to continue the Sumahara game and go through... What did I just do? Did I request analysis? I didn't do that. It's October 20th already. Time to buy pumpkins. You got your pumpkins on, Asturbate. Do you get your pumpkins on? Alright, back to game. So, boom, 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 boom. 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 Dubious. We should take on f6. He plays bishop h4. Now black plays g5. Wow. This is like full, full crazy. Not really good for black. Black has dramatically weakened his king's side doesn't really have justification for it. It's a hell of a Leningrad Nimzo. But I don't know, man. I mean, you're the classical Nimzo player. I would I would have thought you would have played like Queen C2 here. Funny, that has a bad score. This can't be a bad move for white. There's just no way. Way to slightly better. <clears throat> no, another interesting move is Queen A4 check, forcing him to play Knight C6. And then you just, like, play this, and when he plays Knight E4, you could come back with the Queen, and you can also play Knight E2. White's better. H5, F3. Knight takes g3, h takes g. Yeah, I like this. I like this for white. Very unsound play by black. But a3 is time consuming. a3 feels like a major loss of time. Mind those dark squares. He doesn't mind the dark squares. Still, this bishop can only do, do so much. And white's king is still in the center of the board. We're expecting, we're expecting knight e4. Counteracting that bishop. Plays this. e3. And now queen a5. Now it looks like knight e2 is basically... Getting close to forced. He plays queen b3. Pony black's resistance to playing this move. Knight c6. And a really surprising move, knight f3. Black's now threatening take, take, and take on d4. So maybe it's not so surprising. It's funny that he never attempted to play this. Black's really just playing like bullet chess. Compromising his king's side. White just stays solid. Yeah, I don't know. There's a fork here. Fork you.
Do we have a problem with knight d2? g4? <sighs> this is a little bit worrisome. <coughs> I mean, maybe we'll get compensation for the sacrificed exchange. Queen back, knight takes f1, rook takes f1, what does the computer say? White's better. Man, big, big time. I didn't think it would be that clear. Wow. So, black is wise not to go for that exchange. Bishop d7, knight e5, knight e5, bishop e5, bishop a4. And then grabbing pawns. I'm looking over here, you know. I guess you have queen b7, queen e7, threatening bishop h5, and stuff like queen back to b4. And black doesn't have rook b8. Yeah, this is a good move. The fact that he doesn't have rook b8 is kind of a game changer. Now, knight takes c3 is not a big deal. I thought you would just play bishop h5, but black has defenses. This looks serious, man. This looks very serious. I mean, how does black guard, how does black guard the king side? Seriously. Seriously serious. Is there any way to defend? There is one way to defend. There's no ways to defend. You have bishop d7. Okay. Oof. Wow. You have a way out of this one? Like bishop c7? I'd like to see you get out of that. Either way, man, this is over. Yeah. I mean, the other problem is, is white is threatening this and this, which is really crushing. Man, it's totally over. But he sacks the exchange and then plays queen e7 with the idea of queen f6. It wasn't necessary to sack the exchange there. And queen f6 is not mate, keep in mind. But it might be if we can force him to play rook f8 or something. But now queen h7 protects everything. You're going to have, like, bishop f7. <laughs> but still, queen f7. I mean, queen h7. Yeah, I mean, these guys are just bullet junkies, and they both probably played too fast. Yeah, Sumer still has six minutes left. That's unbelievable. Black played the opening very carelessly, but... What about queen f6 first? Then he's forced to play king f8. I mean, this is bad for black, but there's a chance he might survive. So here, here. Man, f4 is scary, huh? That wouldn't be very good news. But again, you, you can keep it closed with like g4. I like this. I like this position. <sighs> oh my god. That has to be winning. Only plus 2 point. Only plus 3.5. 
Wow. Yeah, nice job. So queen f5, f4. Same, same idea. Now, obviously, black has to play g4 here. And... Not so easy to finish him off. Yeah, this isn't so easy. You, you have to find queen h4. I'd be tempted to play h3. Oh, no, we can't. Our bishop's hanging. You literally have to play queen h4. And that feels kind of slow. But I guess he had nothing else. Although you could have played queen f6 first. Maybe this is a more accurate move order. King f8, bishop h5, and then queen f5 anyway. Queen h6 check. Not so easy. Yeah, this is close. I'm not sure he should have sacked the exchange. It kind of like brought black's queen into the game. You know, going back to that point, his queen is like on a5. And this knight isn't hurting you. So instead of sacking the exchange, you should have just gone bishop h5 directly. This is like killing. You had that bishop c7 thing. I mean, that's just murderous. This is a big mistake. Rook takes c3. Black's almost okay here, but that's just game over. Isn't it? I guess not. Wow. That's the secret move. The game changer. All right, good job. Sloppy, sloppy. Very sloppy. I've got Nefidov up next. Unless you guys want to like sponsor your games to go, to go first. Waiting for Nils to come by. He was on earlier. He's gone now. Cooking rooks. Uber driver, where are you? Uber driver's playing. Someone on sounds just hanging out on the on the site. All right. We've got Nefidov. The clock. Are you trying to tell me something? This is Nefidov, the great Nefidov. My latest with word game analyze, please. Game against Rugli. I don't know how to pronounce that. Rugli. Ignore the result. That's what he says every time. Parentheses, glitch, and leech ass. I won the game. I'm not results oriented. Alright, he's white. The Nefidov. Roy Lopez. A6. Yeah, you're going to regret that, bro. Nefidov plays the Schliemann with black and the exchange for Lopez with white. Go figure. He has weird... He has kind of weird, unrelated openings. But it's cool. He knows what he knows. A6. Bishop takes C6. It's like a Nesbadinov-like combination or something. Actually, Nesbadinov didn't play the Schliemann, but he did play the exchange Lopez. Bishop takes C6. D takes C6. <sighs> I saw someone showed me a game where their opponent played this. Hey, it's Miro. And I wasn't sure if it's better to play f6 or, or c5 here, but they're both good. And occasionally you see d3, which is like passive. Again, same thing. So Nefidov knows what he knows. He castled and he's threatening to take the pawn on e5. This 
is a legitimate threat at this point. Knight takes e5 is a threat. Curious says 97. Curious doesn't say anything anymore. Wasn't that Ni Nigel Short resuscitated that variation? Isn't it called the Nigel, Nigel Short variation? Nigel Short Memorial Golf Club for re resuscitating that in the modern era. Yeah, I've seen that somewhere else too. But there's a very, like, Nefidov knows that. I mean, it's like a tricky line. He probably knows that. He knows his stuff. I don't advocate the exchange rule of Pez, but it's okay. It's playable. It's fine. Um, bishop d6. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, most people play either bishop g4 or f6. I know the least about this line with bishop d6. Having never played the exchange really with white, never studied it anyway. Here's a funny move, though. I always thought this was kind of weird. Because, you know, you, you, like, trade off your light square bishop and then start creating, like, weaknesses on the white squares. Sorry, I don't really believe in that. I mean, that leaves us with what else? I mean, our only other move is d4, basically. This is, like, lame. You know, why would I play that? So d4... Nisipianu, Carlson. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's it's probably not a bad idea to play the exchange variation against Carlson if you... Though normally, Nisipianu is a fighting player. He probably wouldn't mind a draw against Carlson. Um, lots of draws here. Very few losses. <coughs> D4. Take it. No. Yeah, I mean, well, it's sort of like, why not take, you know? Black has the bishop pair, white has a strong pawn on e4. You wonder if black has more winning chances in the Berlin endgame, the Berlin endgame, versus exchange. I think that's worth some statistical analysis. We'll get Mr. Coffee on it. Good question. Good to see you. Move 11. Welcome. Um, my guess would be... No. But I'm just guessing. Seems like Shankland has done courses on everything. He's like a professional course course giver. I don't think he actually plays chess, he just makes courses. You gotta make a living somehow. He's like the new Peter Spidler. So D4. Yeah, D3 is lame, man. That's lame, dude. Get out of here. D D3. So black plays bishop g4. What is this? How does that work? Some kind of sideline. Thanks for the bishop. So at the end of the day, I mean, like black just gives back his bishop pair. Oh, this is great. So now black's pawns are doubled. He's given up the bishop here. He's given up his light square bishop. And white remains with a strong pawn on e4. So that doesn't seem right. Kovanova played it, though. And my old friend Bogdan Dan, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. Man. Yeah, this isn't good for black. He's lost all of his compensation for the bishop pair. White just remains with a strong pawn here. So white is a solid edge. Now maybe knight d2, knight c4. 
looks kind of promising. Uber driver mentioning knight c4 earlier. I, I don't really fancy this, you know, particularly. It doesn't have, like, where to go. Nefidov's move is very natural. He played rook d1. But I, I lean toward the knight d2. Because I think this is the, the crux of the thing here. We're going to play, like, here, you know? I mean, that's going to be a problem. What... What is black going to do when we when we go up to challenge his bishop on e5? It just this looks very out of place and vulnerable on e5. So the other people have played queen f6 and then white's just gone into a good ending. Vitali Kunin, I don't know that player. I've heard the name. Bishop takes f6. Someone played e5. Hmm. A rather committal decision. I mean, white's no doubt better here. But I'm not sure about playing e5. I'm also not sure about trading queens. Black's queen looks rather awkwardly placed on f6. I wouldn't be surprised if there was another option for white, but he is double attacking b2. Let's see what the engine says. Oh, shit. Someone say not trade queens? See, this is the problem. There's only, like, Monica Sacco is the only good player with white in the whole list. And you're offering white the chance to go into a slightly better ending, so everyone traded. But it looks like queen h3. Well, that definitely prevents queenside castling, but the more important idea is that black's queen is misplaced. And this is... Is this a threat, is the million dollar question. Wow. Wow, it's like a massive tactical shot with e5. And if bishop takes e5, that's the big question, rook e1. We prevented castle and queen side. This is not so clear. Rook e1. Maybe Kunin had done some homework here. I don't know. It looks like black's hanging on. Knight e7. Wow, white's sacking everything. Knight f3. Bishop here. Bishop g5. Oh, this is an awesome variation. Castles. And we win the queen. But black has a rook. And two pawns. Rook, two pawns, and bishop. For the queen. Ooh, that's a fantastic position. Almost like forced variation. Very interesting. All right, now this didn't happen in the game. Oh, Nefidov played rook d1 first. Yeah, which forces black to play queen f6. And now he did avoid the trade of queens on the similar idea. But here we have the very, you know, kind of blatant, like queen d7. You could play queen h3 here as well. I don't know which is better. I guess he wanted to be on g7, although I don't I don't know if it matters. <coughs> There's also bishop g5. But I, I applaud Nefidov for playing aggressively and trying to, you know, keep the queens on the board rather than settling for some tiny edge. The black has king f8, so queen d7 isn't decisive. Wow. Well, it's just better again. Now, knight d2, bishop takes b2. He doesn't have this? I guess not. Alright. Other options? Queen h5. Queen two is natural. I guess queen h5 hits the bishop, but I guess he would have to be worried about this. It's still bad for black. Take, take, and take. It 
So I guess with queen h5 you stay a bit more active here. You're still better, but only slightly better. Nefidov must have been tempted to offer a draw here. He loves offering draws. The, the urge almost overcame him, despite being slightly better. I don't know, though. What, what are we supposed to play in this position, if not g3? You have a rook lift. Anybody in favor of, of a4, the alternate slate of electors? I go for alternate slate of electors here. Knight b3. I like this, though. This is so... so nice, isn't it? It's so nice to play a4 and lift the rook in this position. Castles, rook a3. Beautiful thing, right? Now we can't move our knight, so maybe it's not such a great idea. It just looked nice. <clears throat> it is a top top three move. I don't know why the computer is saying like g3 is a question mark. Oh, it was bishop f4 that was question mark. Okay. But g3 is okay. Here. Yeah, man. This is awful. Full strategic beatdown. Bad knight on the side of the board. Powerful pawn in the center. Threatening to smash his pawns. We have bishop that's very strong on both sides of the board. Black's not castled. It's a catastrophe. Queen f6. Defending against bishop takes h6. Bishop c3. Queen g6. And there's no way he can like sneak in here, you know, with h5, h4, and checkmate you. That's not really, um, he was in the zone for this game. Now, I would think, like, black would play b6, but that's an issue. He can't even, like, try to obstruct the bishop. Unbelievable. Maybe a5. Please take my pawn. I think that's literally, like, black's best move here. I would give him the pawn to try to castle. <clears throat> see if he would bite. Because if you play a5 and white plays bishop a3, now you can play b6 without without dropping the pawn, although I don't know if this is good either. There is a slight issue here with like queen c8 check. Yeah, this is really ugly. Man, black is toast. Bishop b4, nice move. Fundamental. Fundamental Nefidov. Yeah, he's trying to hunker down now. Oh, black offered a draw. Oh, face palm. Nefidov deserves it, though. He's constantly offering me draws when he's, like, worse. This is funny, though. I don't know what you should play. You're clearly, clearly better on the verge of winning. Uh, F4 seems kind of committal. It's it's probably not a bad move. Black plays knight F7 and offered a draw. Dude, I don't know what I would do. I would start to do the Dimitri, where I'm like looking behind me to see like who's offering a draw. Like it must be on one of the other boards because it definitely isn't here. That's what you do next time. You just try to like look around like you heard a draw from on one of the other tables. This is ridiculous. I mean, Black is almost in Zugzwang in this position. He offered a draw. There better be some money involved. And now we now we got now he's pissed. He's gone for the win. So f5 versus queen c8. 
Ooh, baby, look at that. Mmm, mmm. So close. Wow, man. This is, is mildly annoying. How do we finish black off here? Now, if it have, you know, I guess this is the logical try here. We don't seem to have, oh, we do have a threat. He found it. So we have this. We have queen c5, and then we'll sack the exchange on d6. Well, we'll just take... Yeah, he can't. He'll wait until we play queen c5. So he played knight e5, but it's a blunder. Black is basically in, so it's fine. Wow. That's an impressive game, man. I think Nefidov has a, has a hidden electronic device. The way this game went, man. That's like offering a draw, draw to Hans. Knight e5, queen c5. Yeah. So if black made a different move, like, I don't know, whatever, rook g8, you know, you go here, black plays this. I guess rook g8 is a bad example. But we have a couple options. I mean, one of them is to play e5. That might actually work. The other one is just to rip the knight. Takes, takes, takes. It might not be enough. Well, rook g8, you know, gets gets lucky here because you have queen d7 and king f7, defending the rook. So e5 is probably winning. I don't think black's surviving this. Anyway, good game by Nefidov. Very impressive. Um, all right, back to our study. Got a few games left. Thanks, guys, for joining. Let's get a hype train started. Been a while. I know there's a slight economic recession, but it doesn't mean you should cut down on everything. I mean, your chess, chess streamer support. You can cut down on the beer, toilet paper, hot, you know, heating, but chess streamer support, come on. Rolling blackouts, no problem. What am I doing? Guys, be the first to, to donate a sub this week. Actually, we already have one. Be the second to cheer. All right, <clears throat> if Goiju, Mr. Coffee is next, I guess. Mr. Coffee got his, his game on earlier. Mr. Coffee, ah, the complete London system rupture. You saw that in my studies? That must have been studies that I contribute to or something. I definitely don't have a study called the complete London system rupture. Oh, I'm now on Chessable. I should do like meme. I should do like meme. Join Chessable and do like meme Chessables. The the Susan Polgar career overview. Max Lugie's best cheapos. And the London system revamped. Coming out on Halloween. Alright. Mr. Coffee submission. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Yes. Mr. Coffee, this is correct? D4, E6. Knight F3. Crushing it. Knight F3 is not a bad move. It is not a bad move, sir. Don't forget to support your local chess streamer, whoever he or she might be.
Yeah, Uber driver like C5 D take C. We're going to hear about that now. You can play C5 against Mr. Coffee. He'll play E3. <clears throat> Knight F3, Knight F6. E3. No Tory attack. Now that plays B6. Okay, so it's an E3 Queen's Indian if you step up and play C4. I think the E3 Queen's Indian is actually, Mr. Coffee, you could you could kind of branch out. And um, if you want to incorporate more C4 type stuff, there's a lot of poison in these lines. I think that it's another Richard Pallister recommendation. I've really struggled against against the E3 variation with black. It's not that easy. Um, if you want to branch out, you can start incorporating C4 here. It's never too late to play C4. Oh, Anonymous Gifter strikes. Anonymous Gifter giving tier 1 sub to Parmenides. Long time no see. <clears throat> Tough Canadian player. Canadian! Alright, celebrating Big Bear Week. Fat Bear Week. And the Anonymous Gifter. Alright, Bishop D3, Bishop B7. Castles, Anonymous Bear Week. Um... Black now plays d5. Black does not need to play d5 immediately. I think c5 is the more flexible. I recommend that I play that myself. Um, d5 is like very committal, basically. He's playing the Kuli Kotnowski now with black. A symmetrical Kuli Kotnowski. If you want to be really funky, you can play double fianchetto. Let's see if there's any Carlson games. Magnus kind of likes Double Fianchetto, but not here, apparently. But my friend, my very good friend, Yevgeny Romanov. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's not as boring as the London system. Lots of fun here. G6 is definitely not boring. I think that's one of the most interesting ways that black can play. It's quiet, but that's different from boring. It just starts out quietly, and then it will get interesting later on. Um, Alright. Boring is when you trade all the pieces. D5, B3. Therefore, we can recapture with the pawn on C4. The boring company. So now, a proper. Here we are, Richard Palliser. Bishop d6. I guess Bishop a3 would be boring. Trying to trade pieces. <clears throat> we don't want to do that. We just play here. This is this is interesting though. Black plays bishop e7. So what does that tell us? Why is he playing bishop e7 rather than the more active bishop d6? I'm not sure what it means. I mean, White's probably going to stick this knight on e5 at some point. So if, if you play like bishop d6 instead, I play bishop e2, you castle, I bring my knight over. Now you play like knight bd7, I play knight e5, and now my point is, black can't play this ever because his pieces get forked. Whereas if your bishop was on e7, let's just look at that for a second. Bishop e7, bishop b2, castles, knight on bd2. 
knight on bd7. If I played knight e5, you could take it. It wouldn't be that bad. But then again, like, white doesn't need to play knight e5 because black doesn't have a bishop on d6. And he's not threatening to play, like, e5 or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to draw a conclusion. Although I would say one thing that's very important in general. If you play this, there's a chance your queen can go to e7. As seen in many openings, like the Stonewall Dutch. White pieces, usually, the queen can go to e2. When you develop the bishop to d6, your, your bishop gives your queen a place to go. Otherwise, you're going to have problems with the queen. It's it's common in the Catalan. Same thing if white was bishop, bishop on e2. Anonymous gifter. Thank you again. All right, I just felt like saying that again. Yeah, so Mr. Coffee plays 95 here, even though it's not, you know, required by law to play 95. That's the question. I think it's a standard plan to play 95 and support it with f4. But I'm hesitant because Quang Liem says you can play knight takes e5. My recollection of Rubinstein playing this type of stuff with white, you know, I don't remember. He probably, very likely, had this exact position against one of his opponents, one of the best players that I know, you know, to study the the Kali Kotnowski. Forget about Kotnowski and Kali. Just study Rubinstein's games. That's all you need to do. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, you have a major option here. Queen e2, building your position. Now we have the reverse problem. Because we can't take... But at least our queen like gives us a little more space. Now c4, and then white would typically exchange pawns on d5 and double on the c file. I think I looked at stuff with, like like this with Mr. Coffee long ago. We're 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 playing Kosic style here. <clears throat> rook c1, a6, rook c2, and then we'll try to double double up on the c file. See if we can't sack an exchange on c6 or something. It's a little unpleasant playing with that knight on e4, though, and, like, you can't get rid of it. Anyway, there are different ways to play. Knight e5 is a move. Okay. So apparently black can either play knight e4 or take it. Even keep the tension with c5. That's what your guy did. I'm happy with that. That's fine. You know, we're going to play f4. Now he's going to need to plonk this into e4 at some point and try to cut off. You know, he wants to kick your knight out of e5. Yeah, so this is like really bad play by black. If you wanted to take the knight, you take it and you make me like take with the d pawn here. You got to take it now while I take with the d pawn. Karyakin, Lei Quang, Lei Quang, Lei Quang, Liam. This could be a problem. I think, Mr. Coffee, you've had games like this where the pawn become weak, became weak. Become weak. Um, if I talk too fast, I'm going to start having grammar like Herschel Walker. So, anyways, I like this idea with Knight, knight here f4 but knight c5 will give black knight c5 will give black some some counterplay i mean you could be like getting mated there by the way with like bishop takes h7 king h7 queen h5 check king g8 rook f3 hello it's real close it's getting kind of stuffy in here A draw, apparently. Only a draw. Better than my last bishop takes h7, though. Which was a lost position. Mr. Coffee would, would remember that. I shared in my, in my team. 
<laughs> so this seems like a clear mistake. If you're going to allow f4, then you don't take on e5 and allow the guy to open up like a crushing stonewall attack with the f file. This is crazy. Nobody would do this. That's insane. You know, it's funny, look, like, maybe maybe the f file isn't isn't even the only way to do it. Maybe this is strong too. Well, that actually happened in a game. The problem is like if knight e4 So Mr. Coffee took with the F pawn. I mean, look at this position. F4, number one move. Only one player played knight takes e5. And the one game where it happened with with d takes e, white couldn't win after knight e4. Two games. What does that tell you? I would be assuming like Mr. Coffee's right. Like this is this is good. We've got lateral capture here. So knight e4 bishop takes you can play knight e4 bishop takes possibly bishop takes pawn takes yes this is dangerous queen g4 <clears throat> trying to win that pawn I'm, I'm a little skeptical of this but we've got to think about it w you know what's going on here knight knight takes knight f6 check I admit I don't love giving up my white square bishop. So if you take with the knight, which is what you did, you have to give up pressure on that pawn on e4. And do something like what? This? Try and pressurize this diagonal. And we just magically found a couple of games. The Peruvian guy? Another, another guy from like UTD, these guys I don't know, um, Rachel Dolezal, the, um, the fake NAACP, uh, no, I'm just kidding, I don't know, all right, <clears throat> man, I don't know. Knight takes e5, d takes e5. I, I like this too, though. I like this too. You also have f5 here. Is it possible this is good and and nobody's found like the right way to do it? Not convinced. <coughs> This is just like a kind of lame move. Gurgle. Gurgly. Bishop takes e4. How about this way? Pawn e4. The long term weakness of this pawn. Yeah, I'm not finding anything con conclusive. My instinct was to take with the f pawn, and we're golden, but where is the kill? Where's the killer move here? Rook f4? Can I play rook f4, f5? Rook f4 is not good. I mean, there's this. Wait a minute, maybe there's something crazy. Queen h5? I'm really getting out of control now. This isn't gonna work g6 we'd have to go back although like weakening his king side would be a major that'd be a major thing man if you induce him to play g6 this is going to play like later on and the f file that weakens his position a lot so queen h5 definitely has to be considered like there's the guy who played queen e2 if you're going to play queen e2 like wouldn't this be a lot better induce g6 and then go back to e2 I would think. I mean, black can also play f5 there, but it looks cr crazy. Takes. He's he's in trouble. Bishop takes. 
This looks really bad for Black. Black's probably lost here. I mean, this is much worse than the other version. Very borderline. So this is interesting, man. Let's turn on the engine and see what it says. Going back a move. So that's just, it's insane. Wow. The takeaway is that white only has a slight edge. But the shocking thing about it, I expected a bigger edge because look, like nobody plays that move. It's just unbelievable. Everyone assumed that this is automatically bad for black. You've got 48 games, Yusupov playing white against Matlikov, Moskalenko, whoever, the computer, Alexander Kosinyuk, Shanklin with black, lost to a 2300, back in 2014. But nobody takes any five. They're, they're terrified, you know, to open the F file. And it's actually not that bad. But I think, you know, I think you did it the right way. I, I slightly prefer F takes. All right, 94. And let's see, how's queen H5? It's got a problem. Wow, wow, Rook C8 would be like balls of steel. I love that move, man. That That's balls of steel. That's seriously. I'm not even going to react. Not even going to blink, you know. You play Queen H5 all you want. I'm just going to play Rook C8. This is the computer, man. Computer is unbelievable. Here, here. This is solid. I'm not sure about Bishop B2. You gotta consider this. Black has to play bishop d5. You know, in the near future. There's a couple games, and they're all good players with white. Everyone played bishop a6. Oh my god, and white won every game. So that's the secret. You like avoid the exchange of bishops and you keep him frozen and there's no rook c8. Very interesting. We're, we're getting to the, the deep secrets of the, the Kali system, Kali Kotnowski here. I wouldn't have found that move quickly. And then you play a4 at some point. But I think this is a little bit on the passive side. On the other hand, you're blockading his passed pawn. You know, you got c4, and I don't think your position is. I still think that you're probably slightly better. There's a little issue with this, though. A major issue. And also the fact that your queen has nowhere to go. You're going to have to maneuver through e1. So we see the effects of that, you know, of the bishop obstructing the queen. Like, this is a better place to have your queen. You won't have to worry about bishop g5. Your queen has space, you connect your rooks. Here it leaves you with less space to maneuver. That's immediately a problem. Oh, this sucks, dude. This sucks. I don't want to play... I don't want to play freaking... So bishop c1 is not an option. Man. Ah. Oh. Dude. Oh my god. But if you don't play that, you're going to be in some kind of eternal pin. King F2, anyone? Unfortunately, King F2, F6 looks dangerous. I mean, I'm willing to consider anything here, but this, this, is, this is not good. I was considering this. <clears throat> I'm a little bit worried about this and then, you know, I'm coming down. You may, you might have to like accept the fact that you messed up and let him take here and take back with the piece. I don't think this is so bad, you know. If you get this, 
You still have like a queen side majority on the other side. I think you need you need to be very 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 thinking about this position. I'm not sure that that bishop c1 is the right idea here. You're you're just like you're like screwed now. Your whole position is screwed after that. You can play queen d2 and okay. I guess he just can keep the pin on you. I don't know, but this <laughs> you can play rook f4. I think this is better, man. Bishop c1 was like too quickly reacting. And black should have something now. <coughs> I mean, it's true, you could play maybe c3. That's what you did. Rook c8. a4. Um, okay. He trades. He really doesn't like tension too much. Takes. Mm-hmm. Man, now we're really in big trouble. So you made a good move, I guess? What about b5? Does he have b5? Well, anyways, he could just take this. It looks like rook takes. You lose all your pawns your entire center. If you take this, it's like takes, takes here, takes this, I'll take that too, and have like a million pawns. Very, very nasty. Black's definitely better. Let's see what happened. He took him to bishop. Yeah, man. I mean, like, rook takes looks really strong. Yeah, rook takes is much stronger. And the computer doesn't want you to recapture. This is such, such a typical, you know, like, average player move. Just make the routine move. So I guess, you know, he's thinking about, what, queen g5? Or are we going to do rook d3 with exchange sacrifice? <clears throat> you have queen f2, but it's not forced. I think it's important to trade queens or try to force them to take with the queen on d3. So he can play queen takes d3. Ah. Uh. Did I just groan? Can you get the cement shoes out for me? <laughs> Have you seen where Mr. Coffee left his cement shoes again? I know that they were out here somewhere last week. His king doesn't move. It's it's stationary. You might need your rooks might need a little help. Like seriously, your rooks might need a little help, like blockading that past pawn. Coming down the middle here, I'm thinking like this. This might not hurt, you know. King e3. This is a matter of possibly a matter of like survival, you know, not just like a luxury. Your rooks shouldn't have to blockade this pawn by themselves, you know. But it's not it's not forced to play king e3. But anyway, like why are you afraid of f6? You know, don't cross the street. He's afraid to cross the street. It's all stemming from his childhood. Um, your mother didn't let you cross the street till like you were, you were seventeen. You were overprotected, and I should be like the the chess psychologist. You're overprotected, and and you're afraid. Your king is afraid to come out from under the bed. <clears throat> this is major, man, major. So the difference between, with the engine, it's, it's pure calculation. Okay, 15 moves deep. How much is our strategic understanding of the game saving us time here? Ultimately, rook takes f2 at depth 16, depth 17. It's just fractionally 
It's fractionally worse, but it's worse. <clears throat> okay, this is important. Open file. But you're still going to have to bring your king up anyway, right? If rook d8... I see king f2 move 27. Okay, you got his rook to the 7th rank. Yeah, this guy feels like he's wasting some time. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure I want to play that, but... You know, maybe you better better not play g3. Why not just play here? You forgot, like, your, your pawn was defended. You can probably draw at will by sacking the exchange if you have, like, a more active rook and king. The question is, can you win? <clears throat> g3 looks like a waste of time, and it weakens the light squares. At least his king got out got out of the cement shoes. I mean, at this point, I would consider h4 to cut his king off. But this is maybe better. Simply that. Yeah, like, so... Can we make progress? Looks like b4, a5 is pretty serious. H4 is okay. But I'm more interested in playing where, like, where we're stronger. I agree, though. Like, maybe we don't want his king coming up to g5. a5 was a heads-up move by your opponent. You had a chance to play a4 there, dude. I mean, b4. I wouldn't be surprised if this was, like, an epically important moment. That could be the difference between, like, winning and drawing. For example, heads up a5 move by your opponent. Because the point is you're threatening a5 now. And what's he going to do? He's going to get more and more, you know, tied down. Let's say he plays king g5, you play a5, he takes, you take. Maybe he has something, you know, with this. But if he ends up passive like that... <clears throat> It's tough. You, you might be winning here. It's very, very close. He also has counterplay. I can't criticize you for playing h4, though. You know, cutting his king off, it's a good prophylactic move. a5. See, you need to have your king blockading, not your rook. And then you could activate your rook. Rook f2, rook f4, king d2. You need both rooks to get active, get down there, and get that pawn. And get winning the game. Yeah, b5. Wow. <clears throat> b5 is like... Really trying to be active. Could be risky. You have lateral defense. He goes active. So I think at this point we've got to seriously consider... The situation... Like, maybe we could be losing if we're not careful. If he takes the g3 pawn and the h4 pawn... Um, my question is, like, do we want to take a draw here with rook c5, rook, rook b4 check, rook c4, rook b1, rook c5? Our pawn's pretty fast, so let's say, okay, rook c5, rook g1, rook a5, rook takes g3. Your king is also over here, and your pawn is pretty fast, and his bishop can get here though that is concerning this is pretty scary man this is pretty scary yeah I can't blame you for retreating I would take a draw I'm afraid I'm afraid like we're losing we're worse so coffee went king e3 probably a heads up decision I think you're, you're doing the right thing by by defending Now the opponent is like trying to win. I mean, he can slowly try to unravel, but he's facing, um, you know, a chance of like 
losing his eight pawn the more he farts around here. But you play rook f2. You can't you can't you can't play rook c5 because of rook e4 check. You could play king f3 and drop the a pawn. Yeah, you're under a lot of pressure. You're close to losing this. Very close to losing this. Although I hate g6. g6 is like the worst move ever played in chess. That's literally the worst move I've ever seen. It's disgusting. g6 is horrible. He weakens his dark squares. I mean, he has like f6 maybe. And king g6. And, or f6 and g5. Jeez. I mean, seriously, f6, he might be winning here. He's right on the verge of winning. You know, g6 is horrible. He could even get mated now. Unbelievable. He created a target for you at f7. Oh, we have to take it. And then play rook c1. Oh, maybe a mistake. Man, this guy's gonna lose this? Wow. It's a nice move, bishop c2. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are we sure we're doing the right thing here? Oh my god. King h7. This guy didn't seriously play that move. Yeah, I mean, this exchange of rooks, man, is really bad for black. But you make a huge mistake yourself now. Shouldn't you play king e3? Here's again, bad play with the king. If he takes the pawn, you take his pawn, whatever. But if he goes here, you have king f2. And the point is, after bishop takes a4, you're taking the other guy out on a5. It's probably just a draw, you know. But at least you're not losing. I don't think you can lose this. Actually, you know, I don't know how you should do it. To to be careful. Yeah, maybe he stays on d1 with his bishop, actually. So king f2, okay, here. King f2, rook bishop c2. King e3. Wait, sorry. King e3, bishop d1. King f2. Maybe he just takes this. And then, you know, when you go here, he just goes back. It's a draw. I mean, ain't nobody winning this. This has got to be a draw. Yeah, a lot of king, king play. Important. Yeah, this is horrible king h7. Whew. Wow. Mr. Coffee trying to win and you actually... Wow. So you gotta defend now. Unbelievable. H takes g5, king g6. You never should have let your rook go in jail on e1. That was a major mistake. Rook jail. The rook is in the gulag. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is just a draw. You know, you shouldn't be greedy. You went too far. That's a bad move. 
So he could have he could have taken and played like king g6, king f5, king g4, and tried to go after your pawn. And now he just like closes it up. He's hoping he can get down here, get down here. You know, he can get in, get the f f3 square, get that pawn. But it's a matter of counting. You know, it's a long way. Oh my gosh. Are you sure you went to the right way there? We well, had to stay in contact with the pawn. Maybe king b5 is better. This is very hard to calculate. The problem is he could give up this pawn and like come back and bring his bishop back into the land of the living. If he needs to stop your a pawn. Master bait, gifting tier one. Thus making us not go into the French transposition, thus letting them play e6 without having proper knowledge of the French. And that's why this course is the greatest course of all time. Are you serious? That's what I'm going to do for the London system, my, my London system course. Astrid, thanks for gifting to Shaki. Wow, this, this was an epic. This was an epic game. Mr. Coffee. Master of King King Play. I challenge you to do like one of those like computer evaluations of how you play with the different pieces. <clears throat> we should take a close look at, at how you how your performance is with set upon loss based on king moves. Jeez. This is unbelievable. The guy played, he, he played king a8. I'm gonna lose my mind. What kind of drugs are you on if you play king a8 here? D d d does anybody play king a8? Why would you play king a8? At least like king b8, but why king a8? That's crazy, look at that. What is king a8 like the only move on the board that, you know, other than a bishop move that doesn't win? Holy shit. King a8 triangulating. That's crazy, man. Like every other move wins. Why would he play king a8? Like why is king a8 better than king b7? You want to be further away? I can't believe it. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. And now you're winning. Oh my god, you're not winning. You're winning, but you're not winning. You could have won a bishop. Okay, this is probably time pressure. King e8 was sick, man. Was it an online game? This was an over the board game, I assumed. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was online. Yeah, king a8 could be a mouse slip if it's an online game. Wow, allowing the fifth force win of a piece here. Mr. Cuffy beside himself who, that he's not losing. And it looks winning, but it's not winning, apparently. Like, black's king gets on, you know, travels very quickly on the diagonal. That's why he put his king on a8. Black played king c7. Oh my god. That's epic, man. I'm going to do a, a, a course for Chessable, like Masters of King play. Mr. Coffee versus Mr. X. Black to play and draw here. Kings move fastest on the, on the diagonal. It's a very well-known fact. This is so sick. First he played king a8, and now he plays king c7. And now he's lost, because he's too far away. So king c6, king f6, king d5, whatever. You can play like, I guess you could play to lose, but it's still a draw. King f5, still a draw. Both sides are gonna queen. 
in all variations. Here, here, and he's just one tempo, he makes it whatever. King g6, king g3, h5, and both sides make queens. It's a draw. Mr. Coffee, like, was this online or OTB? Last game from Chess Kudo. No, we forgot someone. I got Goiju's game, sorry. Goiju. Is Goiju still here? It's not the last game. We got two left. Mr. Coffee, was that OTB? I don't remember your description. Um, because at King A8 now. There's no way anyone would play that move. Emery Tate played Knight A8 against me. That was his favorite move of the game. Knight A8 triple exclam. Good you see here? Alright, good to see you. Thanks to the gift sub from Masturbate. Gifting two gift subs this week. So good you black here. Neither really OTB for me. It was a computer. Mmm. It was a computer. It was a handicap computer. It had internal organ damage. All right. Goju is 2039. I don't forgive anybody for playing H6 here. You can't watch my stream and play h6 in this position. The only moves I'll permit are bishop c5, knight f6, <clears throat> d6, which is kind of interesting. I guess I'll let the Hungarian defense slide. g6, even though it's bad, it's at least kind of interesting. f5, because Steinitz played it. And I'll, I'll permit, um, because I like Joseph Henry Blackburn, even though it's bad, I'll let you play knight d4. But h6, man, I, I hate this move. I really hate this for Black. You know, so many beginners play this type of move. Um, but I mean, you're black, you're a move behind. Whites play the sharpest move, attacking f7. And h6 doesn't construct anything. It, it weakens control of g6 in order to stop pieces from coming to g5. But you're not developing any pieces. You're not increasing your control of the center. If white plays something stupid, like d3, you're okay. You know, everything's okay. If white plays a slow move, then then h6 becomes like useful. But if white knows what he's doing, and he's smart, he's gonna play d4. And he's gonna blast open the game, and h6 is gonna you know turn you into Pavel Blatny. You don't want to turn into Pavel Blatny. He used to play like normal openings. At some point, he lost his mind, and started playing the, the bird Larson with white, and stuff like this. Actually, these are old games. Wow. Yeah, it's just bad. It's bad. He lost the Martin Senf. <laughs> Alright. No. The Blatney variation is not good. It's not good. I like my favorite thing to do is like sack this and play a Danish Gambit style thing. Svidler Blatney. That's that's the most like aggressive. Mr. Coffee with five hundred bits, thank you. Alright. Tomorrow guys, don't forget, Friday Blitzstream. Be here. You know, objectively, white's best line is probably d4, pawn takes pawn, castles or something, you know? You can play anything with white. It's so good for white. The ultimate Danish gambit. So, alright, never play h6. Yeah, c3 is okay, but it's not quite as good as 
as D4 immediately. Pete! It's a shame Lionel Spoon isn't here. Norman Rogers, otherwise known as Pete. Mr. Coffee may have met him. I don't know. Or seen him, but he was a local master in Philadelphia. Um, last time I saw him was like 2005. We were playing... No, we were playing Limit Hold'em back in those days in Vegas. No, no. Norman Rogers. He's a legendary Philadelphia player. Um, Alright, C3. Knight F6. Castles. Yeah, I don't know, man. But knight takes e4 might be okay, I think, in this position. I don't like the way white played it, necessarily. So he has some... Um, there's an issue. Queen b3, knight a5. Bishop takes f7 check, king e7. This has to be bad for black, right? Where's Jim when we need him? I don't know, man. This looks very dubious. Check. Here. Takes. Takes. Eh, I'm not sure. Let's see what the computer says. It's more interesting than, than than we thought. Yeah. This is the best line. Bishop f7, king e7. It looks like you're right. We have c5 there. So white has to play queen a3 check. My bad. Queen a3 check. Good call. Chess kudo. Correction. King takes f7, queen takes a5, and d6, and we transpose. But, you know... It looks like black's kind of hanging on here. D4 with advantage, but not so easy. Yeah, white has to play actively. This is too slow. And we're threatening D5. So white's... White's whole thing is, is too slow. We're threatening d5, we're threatening knight d6, defending. So white's only equal at best, probably. It looks like some kind of Jonathan Schrantz gambit. Even worse than that. Bishop here, for white I mean. This looks a little aggressive. I'm just happy like we got we got out of this. I don't know. Bishop D six. I I wanna get my king the hell out of the center, and Bishop D six looks more fundamental than Bishop G four. I guess he wants to castle Queen side. It's a bit much. Yeah, Goiju is just playing like like a wild wild animal. Um, I'm trying to play, you know, correctly. I think you're just, you're, you're really happy here to play bishop d6. Um, be out of the woods, more or less. d3. It's possible I'm wrong, though, you know. I've been wrong a lot. Maybe it's not so simple. Let's, let's think about this more concretely. Maybe you need to be more resolute. Like bishop c5? Just threaten f2? Kind of loses a tempo. This loses a big fat tempo. Takes, takes, tempo. 
You know, the computer was suggesting queen f6 in another line, but I don't like it here. I don't like this. You know, d3 is going to be a problem. You could play knight d6, I guess. But knight e5. No good. No, you can't. I lied. You could play a6. I guess that's like last resort, huh? It wouldn't be that bad, would it? Not really that bad, I guess. But we gotta get your king out of the center, man. I mean... <clears throat> if it was a blitz game, I would say bishop d6. Yeah, bishop c5 or bishop d6. I can practically predict the computer's moves. You gotta get out of the center, it's it's just no question. This is risky, way riskier. You know, castling long is riskier, not developing your king side is riskier, and then you went, like, psycho with h5. Okay, it's fun, it's interesting, it might even work. But no matter what, you've gotta get your king away from the e-file. You know, I mean, this, this is gonna be bad. We can play d3. I mean, you have to consider, like, maybe there's some way to sacrifice a piece or something. I feel like you should be consolidating. Instead, you're, like, attacking with h5. You know, he might have knight takes e5 here. Let's check it out. Bishop takes d1, knight takes d6, check. King, I would recommend. Actually, I'm not sure. Queen e7, definitely not good. I think, maybe not. I think, therefore, I am. <laughs> Anyone have a suggestion? I don't know what to play. Bishop e7, okay. Bishop e7. Does anyone know what's going on? Knight takes d8, knight takes b5. Looks like black's like almost winning a piece. We're probably like not winning a piece. Rook takes d1. Equal. It's equal. Totally equal. Obvious draw. Alright, let's go forward. So he plays rook takes, let's just see. Rook takes is crushing. Look, you, you went crazy. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with your position at this point. You should just play sensibly. This is a really wild move. Now, after h3, he called your bluff. This is really out of control. I mean, you could play bishop takes. You have to. You know, come back to reality. Give up your light score bishop. Or, you know, possibly another move, but but this is out of question. It's just too much. And now you're just crushed down the middle. Maybe it will take some good technique to win the game. This is a horrifying move by White. I understand why he played it, actually. Maybe it's not that bad. Bishop a4, b5... It's so weird thinking from the other side. Okay, he could just win a clear pawn. No. Um, bishop a4, b5. So it's not a horrifying move. All right, I'll give him a break. <sighs> he has knight g5. If he was a psycho, Probably play this. Nothing, nothing great there though. Knight g5, knight takes b5. Okay, he took whatever. It doesn't look that bad, honestly. It's not good, but if it's like a blitz rapid game, you have a chance here. 
There's always King D7. Mr. Coffee would approve. King D7 unfortunately runs into Queen A4, and there is no defense after that. That looks like really bad. You, you just literally have no way to protect. So this is a pretty bad situation. Yeah, I mean, you played against principles. H5, bishop g4. It was too much. Coffee house. But he slowly, like, kind of cashed out his advantage. It's unbelievable. You escaped with queen, queenside castles. Wow. How did that happen? Okay, so I guess queen e2 is, like, a massive mistake by white. <coughs> He has, um, he has to worry about c5, though. What would Roman play? You know, I bet, like, if it was Jinji, he would play, like, b4 or something. He's, like, sitting on you strategically. That's a good move, right? I mean, what is black going to do? Desperately play a5 or something and try to bust out. B4 looks really strong. It, it freezes your C-pawn. It helps in the case you castle queenside. He keeps queen A4 in reserve. Or just a general pawn advance over here. So ironically, like, white should start to play positionally. <clears throat> Piling up, and you get away. Unreal. Now you have a tactic with 94. Goichus. Tactical finesse comes into the thing. And black has a lead in development. Rook g6, queen f5. Trapping the rook now. But you're starting to get some stuff going on here. Maybe bishop c5. He has this as well, I don't know. Which way to go? I mean, your position, though, is okay now. He's all discombobulated. He lost coordination. It's a nice move. I think White has to come to the conclusion that he's not better anymore and try to salvage his game. A lot of people have trouble doing that, you know. Okay, rookie 5 may be a best move. Attacking h5. One of the hardest things to do in chess is to, like, you know, accept that you made a mistake and change your focus or any game, poker especially. I was looking at bishop c5, though. This is a nice sort of cheapo. You have this, knight g3. If you play bishop c5, oh, he just takes. Never mind. Sorry. It's a nice cheapo. Masturbate would approve. But I don't want to lose, like, the g3 pawn for nothing, or h5 pawn for nothing. You have a massive lead in development here, though. Does it work? I mean... Either it works or it doesn't work. Two possibilities. Your knight's hanging, you could just be two pawns down. Let's roll the dice. We're two pawns down. All of his pieces are un, you know, unmoved for two pawns. Do I have a tactic or not? It looks real likely. Nothing obvious though. Black played g6. Not sure exactly why he can't take that. Is there is there like some limit? How many pawns the opponent can capture or something? I would definitely be interested in seeing the reputation of Queen takes g6. This is a stone cold bluff.
I'll just attack something for the sake of attacking it. I feel like you have something here, but I'm not sure where it is. You almost have to have something. I, I want to turn on the engine. Jesus. G6 is the best move. Knight takes F2, Desperado. Wow. The computer is so cold-blooded. It just doesn't care. It, it says, you gave the second pawn for nothing. You've got nothing, bro. Give it up. So we have to go back to the previous position. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, it was a good try. But the engine is just mercilessly, like, saying you don't have enough. Wow. Unbelievable. He didn't take the pawn. Three pawns up. Okay, I mean, it's wise, wise, maybe. Now you have knight c5. To be careful. Yeah, I would have played knight c5 as well. I like, I like this. Going for knight d3. But you didn't play knight d3. That's the only problem. You forced him to play d4, but you didn't play knight d3. I mean, knight d3 forces him... What is he going to do? He's going to have to play knight d2. I think he's in trouble after this. You actually still have mating threats. I mean, in fact, like, you could even play rook, rook e8 here. I'm not sure if it's a good move, but it's an option. Yeah, I think this, this was thoughtless. You should have played knight d3. He has bishop g5, but b2 is hanging. If you get b2, you mess up his whole structure. You have serious threats here. I think this is a big mistake, knight e4. I don't know what you're doing with knight e4. There's no threat. You had to go into d3. You're just grasping at straws. So you got one of the pawns back. But you're actually not threading anything. Maybe he, he made a mistake here. If he plays knight d2, bishop h2 check, king f1. Show me. Show me the refutation. Some bishop move. Bishop here. I'm still getting away. There's possibilities white white could vastly improve his play. It looks like good you got got fortunate there getting a pawn back. Now he's like in the range of holding on. Whoa. Way too dangerous. Just tempting fate with F3. Wow. Dude, what are we doing after F3? Somebody tell me what we're doing here. Does anybody have a suggestion? I don't like F3, man. This is too risky. You need to tone it down a little bit. You need to play more games against me and other players of my ilk. You're being too, too like, too wild. So white just like makes this absurd blunder. Bishop h4. <laughs> Ouch. That kind of loses a piece. And now it's over. We're gonna get we're gonna need good technique though, and I don't like the position of your rook. So you probably want to get the rook to the h file. To some file anyway. But it's a total totally different player now. He seems much more under control. 
He likes winning positions, apparently. Yeah, that was an adventure. You're very fortunate to take this one down. Nice mate, though. Alright, last game. Last game. Uber driver, no, sorry. Uber driver didn't submit a game. We've got, um... Who was this? Chascudo. Uber driver. It's two syllables. Um, two unrelated syllables. Chascudo or Uber driver. Uber driver. Karokan. I think we're getting the feeling that the Karokan is, is Chascudo's favorite opening. And now C5. Should have played bishop f5 instead of e6. Later. Good stuff. Life changing. Really? That's a very kind, you know, compliment. Um, but I find that a lot of people, you know, they play based on who their opponents are. If you're playing weaker players all the time, you're going to play radically like wild chess because people let you, you know. I mean, if you're going to play like stronger players all the time, then they're going to kick you around and they're not gonna let you get away with it so I feel like your your play in that game was wildly loose they would take your money in a in a pro, pro game playing like that you know you need to tone it down all right you can't submit games anymore <laughs> good because I have to go to bed all right this is our last game for today next week we'll get you this is over over the board game Chescudo, club player. I'm sorry, our other um, Dutch player, Nils, is not here. He, he he was playing club games for a while. I haven't heard from him. I have to send him a message. I love that the Netherlands has such like such a strong sort of club culture. There's no club culture in Hungary. It's really weird. I just don't understand it. It's not just Hungary, it's like the region. I guess like Northern Europe, North Western Europe has a much better chess club culture. I don't understand why we don't have freaking normal chess clubs here. There are like chess clubs, but they don't meet like in a traditional weeknight basis. I would love to play chess on the weeknight instead of freaking Sunday morning. All right, so anyway, Okay, all the critical lines are like takes on c5 primarily, and of course the possibility of knight f3. c3 is, it's kind of lame. Shaki said local chess club is still closed because of COVID. Could be making a comeback. Keep wondering if I should like get another COVID vaccination. Last time I checked was like back in the spring. All right, don't don't bring any anti-vaxxers to the stream. We hate that. C3 is actually quite good for black. Well, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with C3. But it's definitely not dynamic. I mean, this is the majority of like random people are going to play that move. This is extreme pawn move. H3. Mildrag Savage. A bunch of random people have played H3. He's obviously afraid of Bishop G4. So you know, like, he knows that you know that he knows that you know that you're going to play Bishop G4. It's like he's leveling you. I'm going to play H3. Um, but h3, you know, it's it's obviously not like the critical move. It's a move, but it's not a problem. I mean, we have another great diagonal for the bishop to go to on f5. Absolutely no need for bishop g4. We have everything we wanted already. Thank you very much. Yeah, so h3 losing valuable time for white. Yeah, I mean... You could play like the, it was, um, what was the Belarusian Grandmaster? Um, Kabrychik. 
Kaprachik used to play bishop e3 in the French advance. You know, I mean, this this kind of makes sense. Um, Kaprachik style, what else? Just normal developing moves, like knight f3 or bishop e2. Now, I guess he could also maybe take on c5. Does anyone do that? Probably not that stupid. I mean, could try it. But it's better to do that without c3. Yeah, bishop f5 was played in every single game. Not surprised by that. You know, honestly, like, h3 is so stupid that you could play e6 and have a good, a reasonably good, like, French, I guess. Like, h3 just, it's ridiculous. It's like playing a3 in the King's Indian, you know? It has nothing to do with anything. If anything, it's like interfering with his like pieces and stuff. It's funny though. This would be fine, a fine like exchange French for you. H3 really just inhibits white. He'll probably end up playing H4 and will transpose some kind of, you know, variation. Um, so you take. You know, I feel like you shouldn't take, because, like, why? You know, you offered him the pawn last move, like, what changed? Yeah, bishop f5 seems like the logical try. You could play maybe g6 or something. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you want to be really funky, no, nah, I don't think I want to play knight h6 now. Queen b6 is interesting, but I think your queen might get misplaced. That could be a problem. I don't know how good it is for white, though. Again, h3. So here, here. I mean, even this, just to prove a point, is probably not that bad for black. Primarily because of h3. But yeah, I agree. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do queen b6 and allow this. So by process elimination, you know, and we're not going to play h5. Process of elimination, we have pawn takes pawn, bishop f5, e6, pretty much g6 in that order. So that's why all the strong players played bishop f5. This move is a concession. You know, you're you're like releasing the tension and you're reducing your options and you're giving him c3 for his knight so i think it's definitely a mistake in any case um you wouldn't want to normally do that necessarily i think you can still play bishop f5 is there a question of the b7 pawn it should be fine. I mean, after after C D E D, or C D C D, you you still have a good game. I think. The only the only difference is the primary difference is that this. And we don't have this because of Queen A four check. No, so you're only equal. You're not like better, probably. You should have been better. I guess you're better after bishop f5. The one reason why white has such a bad score here is because that good players don't really play this with white. It might not be that much better for black. Yeah, that's messed up right there. Look at that statistic. The best move for white is d takes c5, but of course no one played that. Who's, you know, going to play c3 and then play d takes c5? Unless it's like a prepared variation. They didn't even play one of the top two moves. Knight f3 and bishop e3 aren't even in the top three moves. The two moves that have been played here. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> Alright. 
so here we are playing a weird French where whites played h3 for free and you've exchanged pawns on d4 and now you went totally like off the rails with queen a5 like I tell everybody queen a5 is always bad there are very few exceptions and white first of all needs to have you know like the lobotomy can you imagine playing knight d2 in this position the entire point is that white can play knight c3 and his knight has a good square at c3 thank you very much for for the exchange on d4 giving him main ideas you know of knight a4 and in so many of these advanced french lines it's unbelievable he doesn't play the entire you know point of the thing he puts his knight on the wrong square but queen e5 you win d4 really wow Well, I mean, knight d2 is like a mind-boggling move. <laughs> I wouldn't have even thought of queen a5. Wow. I bet white can do something. It's such a sick move, knight d2. I can't even like begin to explain it. He wants to play knight b3 and you're preventing it. This is only point, it's like play knight b3. It's the only thing he can't do. But I mean big deal man, he sacks the d4 pawn. It's a normal thing in these like lines with uh, the Milner Barry or whatever. It's no big deal, he should sack the pawn, of course h3, no h3, whatever. I still think white's okay. He should play bishop d3. See, this is a bad move. He's trying to do the impossible now. The question is how to go about it. You play the Milner Barry, you play bishop f5. Now what do you do? Actually, that stops knight f5. Are you sure you're winning a pawn here? You can you can switch plans to like knight b4 or something. This is actually a problem. No, this is the other point. You have you have like bishop b1, queen a6 or something. But maybe this isn't working. Wow. Cuz now he really gets to do knight b3. I still think you should go knight f5, bro. Make him give you his bishop. If he if he chooses to. If he chooses to, that's fine. This is okay. This is okay. You know, I like these positions for black. You just make sure, you know, he um he doesn't get a bishop exchange on g5 or something. You can play h6, bring the queen back to d8, you put your bishop on e6. And you try to storm him on the king side with like g5 if he lets you. I I don't mind that. I think you should definitely play knight f5 here. The question is maybe white should castle and sack a pawn. So knight takes d4, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and you've got a a kind of Milner Barry. Where white has played the weird move h3, but you've played queen a5. Queen a5 is more useful than, than h3, probably. But anyway, that, that seems like the best for both sides. He's got a sack of pawn, you know. There's no other option here. But it's a normal idea anyway. So, again, we've proved that queen a5 is, is not always good. Knight f5, bishop d3, he gets the right idea, okay. At least he has the right idea. Knight d4, I'm not sure a, a3 was, was good. But it does stop you from stuff like this. Ironically, that's a maneuver in one of those lines. Queen b4, queen g4. h6 is good. Yeah, I mean, he has compensation for the pawn.
I would say he has compensation. Now maybe bishop b1. If you castle, he can threaten mate on h7. So here, here, this is very important to be able to threaten the mate. <clears throat> Should we make a raid? Yes, if I can. But I only raid people that I know. You know, I, I would raid, um, I'm finishing after this game. I'll raid Art Vega, our, our friend, queen h7. Here, you know, the problem with these, these Milner Barrys is that you have no place to put your king. Can we first finish this game? Dude, of course. I'm running late, though, not because I have to do a raid. It's just late for me. Um, I'm usually finishing around this time, 10 o'clock, another 10 minutes max. Um... No, I think um, the problem is is long term. Yeah. Oh, who's that? I'm gonna send some donations to Josh Hawley, the right wing Republican from Missouri. Instead of raiding St. Louis, I'll just directly send him some donations so he can like help to ban abortion in uh, in Missouri. If it's not already banned. Gotta make sure you support that St. Louis Chess Club. Get the right wing people in power. Alright, Bishop E7, Rook E1. Yeah, I think this is more important. Set up that Queen D3. If you get safely castled, you're you're okay. You didn't want to risk it. Now he's got bishop e1 again. He doesn't seem to understand that idea. No, he doesn't have it. Oh, okay. Right, so he weakened himself. Yeah, this is way better. So let's say he plays bishop e1. You do the same thing, queen d8. I don't like queen d2 anyway. You know, I think he should probably put his queen here. Controlling this diagonal. This way, he, and he doesn't get forked by knight a5, knight b3. He also can start to stick his knight on d4 or something. But he played kind of aimlessly. Queen d2 just setting you up for knight a5, which is a good move anyway. I guess now he has knight d4 maybe? you got two options, though, and I mean, this will, like, take out his light score bishop at some point. You're at least equal if you do that. You, you don't like sitting on these positions. Well, probably not playing the black side of the advanced French would be a good idea. You know, you didn't have to play the black side of the advanced French. You chose not to play bishop f5. I'm not sure you have a lot of active options, you know. You're up a pawn. I'm happy with your position. B5 is not a bad move. Kind of committal, but I don't mind it. You know, and, and now he's like... Yeah, I mean, only you can be better here. Wade is fighting for a draw. The problem is... <laughs> The question was Black's King, and now the question is kind of answered. Like, it's not going to be that easy to attack Black's King. Ugh. This, this is a very interesting position. It's, it's possible to capture either way. But I have to say, like, it's very tempting to want to open this diagonal for Black here. I don't know how you how you determine what you're gonna play, but I mean you'd have to kind of twist my arm not to do this because I'm I'm playing bishop c6 bishop d5, yeah. I mean let's see he moves his queen and then you go here and then he plays like knight d4 and you go here. And what's he gonna do? You know I mean he's got a very bad position. 
It's really unpleasant for White. I mean, it may take you a while to beat him, but this is hanging. That's hard, man. I mean, both moves are good, I think. But he has a pretty solid blockade of those two central pawns. You're going to have to win somehow with a5. I think this is a little harder for you. I feel like if you took this way, you have a protected pass pawn, you know, and you had the bishop really coming to life in the long diagonal. That would dynamize your game, I think, a lot more. On the pure pawn structure level, like, you took the right way. But I think, you know, in terms of the bishop really becoming another thing. Yeah, this is a good move, though. Your king is safe. Ultimately. This is an over-the-board game. The main thing is that you're, you're, you know, you're following, like, fundamental principles that I teach to people. Number one is, like, you make sure you control the center. Number two, you make sure that your king is safe. Here, he's got some pretty good central control, though. And and also, chess kudo is, is dangerous tactically, but I like your game because you, you combine both tactics and, and positional play. You're not, like, one-dimensional, which is important. Like, everyone should be multifaceted. You're playing strategic and, and sort of tactics combined, which is, is really necessary. You use tactics here, you know, to to gain like a central superiority of, of pawns. So final moment, right? I mean, he has f4. But I mean, you have rook takes f4. To me, that looks like game over. Actually, both are game over. So you're just like, winning decisive material in this position. I had a very similar example today. It was Mr. Coffee's game, the first game, where his opponent played bishop takes e3 instead of, you guys remember, instead of rook takes e3. There might be a problem though. Let's see, rook takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes. This is a problem. This is a problem. I don't know about this. This this looks bad. We're up a pawn, but our king is not safe. You know, this this is huge. You think this is fine? Really? I don't know. The white king is safer than the black king. Because of the holes on the dark squares. Maybe it's fine if you, like, calculate with the computer, but it wouldn't be so easy. you got to be very careful. I guess king d7... Yeah, probably it's fine. But believe me, a lot of people could like totally lose this very, very quickly in like three moves. That's funny. What do you say is fine? One man's fine is another man's. I'm losing this position in like three moves. Like seriously, you're you're like twenty, twenty two fifty, in blitz. I mean, but I would try to avoid that if possible. Keep it simple. No, I didn't see your old comment about taking on c4. This is over. Taking on c4? Oh, he had rook take c4? Say what? Where was rook takes c4? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. No, I talked about it. Hmm. You thought with the other, you have two protected pass pawns. Well, we call them, like, connected pass pawns, right? You mean these. Yeah. You know, these are these are connected pass pawns. The the lead one is a protected pass pawn. Together they're called connected pass pawns. But the question is like, yeah, from the pawn structure perspective you did the right thing, but I think 
making that bishop stronger might have outweighed it, you know. I think you, you, you should have taken the other way. You know, the other thing is, like, ultimately, maybe your king is safer in variation B, where you take with the d-pawn, and your bishop becomes a factor on this diagonal. Right now, it's kind of a decoration on a4. And he has good control of the blockade in the center. It was good either way, but I'm just saying I think I preferred d-takes. Yeah, but this is last chance for white. So f4, bishop takes f4, bishop takes f4, rook takes f4. Why is this, um... Why is this, this different? Gotta like, gotta go. Sack on e6, but when? When, when does he sack on e6? Is there some queen d5 thing? Like, something devastating? Knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes d5. Oof. Ouch. Splat. Undefended rook. King in the middle of the board. Problem with queen here. Yeah. You're splattered with, you know, random pieces all over the place, like, undefended. Every one of your pieces is unprotected. Every one of his pieces is unprotected too, but his king is safer than yours. And that's really the key thing here. But you calculated that. But I think the key is like f4. First of all, you don't have to take it, but I would want to take it if I can take it. As he said on WKRP in the 80s. Take it easy, but take it. You know, this this is definitely... Knight takes e6, bishop takes e3 check, wins a piece. Rook takes e6. This is better. You know, this is okay. Yeah. So here... I want to take on c1 because I love my pawn chain. I want to take this pawn chain home to mom, you know. <laughs> this pawn chain is just ill, dude. It's just, it bodes ill for white. I say you play bishop takes c1, you let him take here, and then you laugh at him. You play a laugh track on your stream. That is a sick pawn chain. Like he has one threat, right, with rook g8. But when you when you sit back and you sort of think about it, you're just like, yeah, king e7. Whatever. You're totally done, dude. This is over. You know, there's nothing that white can do. Right? I mean, this is totally winning. White has zero chance here. That blockade is a thing of the past. It's just a matter of time till the chain just like lurches forward and white falls apart, you know. Yeah, queen e5 was a good move, but you're playing tactics and positional play. I don't like my pawn structure getting messed up, you know, I don't like this, but it's still winning. It, it messed up my pawn structure. It's all good. You're good. I think the two connectors are, you know, kind of winning with the extra rook. All right, guys. Anyway, no, nice game. Nice game. Yeah, both are okay. But going back to the interesting position, um, I got to go, guys. He raises a very interesting question about this capture, you know, and I, I think it's tough, and I'm not sure. Both are okay. The ultimate answer. Stockfish. Buttfish. They should create a, a Hans. Hans. Hans inspired chess computer called Buttfish. 
that would be the ultimate tribute, no? IVYM, thank you. No, I voted for D-Takes, and um, it's close. Look how close it is. Depth 17, 2.1 versus 1.9. Now it's shifting back to B-Takes. My computer sucks, though. You need a real computer with a real processor and tons of RAM. You know, my computer is, like, meaningless. Like, who cares what it says? It's, a, it's basically a coin flip. Yeah, well, it moved at depth seventeen. It said that DC, DC was better, but at depth nineteen, it's saying that BC is better. So don't lose too much sleep about it. It's literally within like one tenth of a cent, you know, one tenth of a cent upon now. Two point oh versus one point nine. Your move, your move is at depth nineteen slightly favored. The right, oh. Uh, Oh no, we took it and we took it over and depth nineteen. We took it over two point one for D takes. Nah, I got it, bro. It's two point one. We're gonna just stop it there. D takes. Depth nineteen by one tenth of a cent upon. Haha. <laughs> it's really close, but either way is good for black different style of game anyway guys thanks for tuning in we're going to be back tomorrow hopefully if I'm still alive Friday stream thanks everyone for supporting the stream gift subs bits everywhere we're going to raid our Vega the mustache show thanks everyone for watching I hope you learned something I certainly did thanks Mr. Coffee thanks all we'll see you Friday tomorrow morning also a stream on Sunday. We've got the usual simul stream on Sundays. Thanks everybody. Bye bye. Have a great one.